Welcome to 5G Hub. In this video, we will talk about the mobility management procedures in 5G core network. As you know, 5G core network architecture is based on service-based architecture. So let's rem remember first the 5G core network architecture, service-based architecture diagram. And also, if you remember in 5G core network functions video, the main 5G core network functions comparing to the 4G first is AMF, uh, it performs access control and the mobility management of the MME. SMF performs the session management of MME and integrates serving gateway control plane and the packet uh, gateway control plane function. The PCF is equivalent to PCRF, for example, and also UDM is equivalent to HSS. UPF is equivalent to serving gateway, user plane, and the packet gateway, user plane. Also, we have a node is called NEF, is equivalent to SCEF. However, the exposure capabilities of NEF don't include the IMS part. Also, for network slicing, we have NSSF, is a new network function used to select uh, network slices and NRF is a new uh, node function or network function used for service registration and discovery under the service-based architecture. Now, if we need to talk about mobility management in core network, when we are talking about mobility management, as the name suggests, deals with everything that needs doing to support the movement of users in a mobile network. This includes such fu functions as system registration, location tracking, and handover. The registration pr procedure is used for, for example, initial registration and registration triggered by routing area change and a periodic registration update between user equipment and the network. And also, there are four registration types. Different registration types are from initial registration, and this is similar to attach procedure in LTE network. Second is mobility registration update, similar to tracking area update in 4G, periodic registration update, and this is similar to periodic tracking area update in LTE, and finally emergency registration. Now, if we need to talk about in more details about the mobility management scenario in 5G core network. Now you can see different nodes. Uh, user equipment ran a new access mobility function, old access mobility function, and some another function related to stores of the subscriber uh, data, session management function and, uh, function, and authentication, BCF, or policy charging function. Now let's start how this procedure will start. For example, the user equipment sent an MMM NAS registration request to the AMF, and the registration request includes the registration type, uh, SUICI or subscription uh, consulate identifier, uh, SUPI or subscription uh, permanent identifier, and 5G GoT or global unique temporary identifier, security parameters, 5G capabilities, uh, BDU session status, and so on. And uh, number two, if the registration request includes a 5G duty, for example, of the user equipment and the service AMF changes, the new AMF sends a message is called N AMF communication UE context transfer containing the complete registration request information to verify integrity of the NAS message to obtain user equipment subscription uh, or uh, SUPI and MMM context from the old AMF and the old AMF needs sends a response message to the new AMF here in this step and the response information contains the user equipment subscription uh, data and the other information. Number three, it's optional step. If the SUPI is not provided by the user equipment in the previous step and is not retrieved from the old AMF, the new AMF sends an identity request to the user equipment to request the user equipment SUCI. Number four, as you see, authentication and security procedures. So AMF here can request the 
AUCF to initiate user equipment authentication. In this case, the AMF needs to select an AUCF based on the SUPI or SUCI retrieved from user equipment. Number five, optional uh, step also, if the user equipment, for example, don't provide the permanent equipment identifier or PEI. Uh, for your information, the PEI will be used to perform the equipment check and they can't obtain BEI, for example, from the old AMF. In this case, the AMF initiates an identity request procedure and sends an identity request message to the user equipment to obtain the PEI. Okay, and this is will be number six, identity request and response. And number seven, the new AMF here will perform ME authentication that's uh, equivalent to BEI authentication or permanent equipment identifier authentication. Now, if we will continue to some of the procedure, for example, here we can see something between the new AMF and UDM here and the last step will be between UDM and old AMF. The three steps is called registration, get and subscribe. So from eight number A, eight B, eight C, there are three procedures, registration, get and subscribe. So here, if the AMF is different from the AMF registered previously, the SUPI provided by user equipment can't indicate a valid context in the AMF and in this case, the new NMF registered with the UDM and subscribe to UDM deregistration notification for the AMF. And here you can see the UDM stores the AMF identifier and the associated access type. Here, AMF obtains access and the mobility subscription data from UDM and SMF here, in this case, selects the subscription data. The new AMF also provides the access type of the serving user equipment for UDM and the access type is set to 3GPP access. The UDM stores the associated access type and serving AMF in the UDR after obtaining the mobility subscription context from UDM, the new AMF setups an AMM context for the user equipment and subscribes to a related status from the UDM. So this is the three types of messages between new AMF and the UDM is started by NUDM, 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 and also you can see here registration, get and subscribe. Number 8D, when the UDM stores the associated access type and the serving AMF as descri uh, described in step number 8A, the UDM now initiates uh, something is called NUDM UCM, uh, for example, deregistration notification service operation to the old AMF. The old AMF, after obtaining this message, removes the MMF context of the user equipment and the old AMF unsubscribe from the subscription information in the UDM. Now we have only the new AMF. So in number nine, the, if the AMF decides to communicate with the PCF, the AMF selects the PCF. And if the new AMF obtains the PCF ID already from the old AMF in step number two and is successfully associated with the PCF identi uh, identified by the PCF ID, the AMF selects the PTF through this ID. But if the PCF identified by PCF ID is not available or the PCF ID can't be obtained from the old AMF, the AMF selects the PCF. So this is number nine about how to select or register between new MF PCF after UDM. Number A10 uh, here there is a relation now between new AMF and the PCF. So the PCF may request user equipment event subscription here. And number eleven optional number if the registration request 
uh, in step number one contain the PDU session to be activated the AMF now request the SMF session management function related to the BDU session to activate the user plane connection of the BDU session. But if the BDU session status indicates that the BDU session is released by user equipment, here the MF instruct the SMF to release the network resources related to the BDU session uh, already was exist. Number uh, uh, 12, registration accepted. This is number uh, the final one. Here, the new AMF sends a registration accept message. Uh, mobility registration information, BDU session, allowed uh, network slicing, periodic registration update timer, uh, a lot of information. Here, to notify the user equipment, the registration uh, request is accepted. Optionally, you can see the dotted one is optionally here. If the new 5G GOT or GTI is allocated, the user equipment send a registration complete message to the AMF for confirmation. So in this procedure, you can see some of the messages is in solid and some dotted. That means some of them may be optional, some of them is mandatory. But here, this is a mobility management in 5G core network. You can see a lot of new functions like AMF, SMF, uh, UDM, all of them, USF, all of them is a new function in 5G core network. So this is a scenario. Mobility management is very important for 5G core network as uh, it's keep uh, a lot of like um, procedures in 5G core network like mobility handover, location update, tracking area update, and so on. So this is for today. Uh, thank you for watching and see you in next video.